Hi, nice to meet you. Thanks for the time today. Sure, Nicole. How uh, are you? Good. Totally unrelated. You have great hair, by the way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say it. Had to. Um, <laughs> so I'm a total newbie. I've never watched B5. I've never watched sci-fi, really. So this is all brand new to me. And like you said, I've noticed the progression as the season has gone on, how Ivana is starting to let her hair down, like you said. And one of the things I love so much about the Ivana of a character is that, you know, she's bold, she's strong, she's not afraid to step up to a challenge or challenge the men on the station. Um, so my question for you is, um, you know, we really didn't see those kind of characters in females in the 90s. You know, I was a teenager in the 90s and I remember watching all sorts of different shows, but I've never really remember like a strong, bold female. So yes. how did that feel like to play that? Was it challenging? Was it fun? Uh, especially in that era when it was so male dominated, uh, you know, with those leading characters, like what was that like? Uh, it had to be quite an experience. Well, I, I, I was raised with three older brothers. So I was, you know, um, I, I was used to that, that testosterone being around me. So when it came to Michael O'Hare and Jerry Doyle, and Bruce and and all the rest of the boys on the set, um, I fit right in. And and I think that the you know the the reason why they it's kind of funny because you'd think it was far more um, nuanced than this. But one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why they recast Tamla and Tomito is because she was too petite to to come across as authoritative. Mm -hmm. and, because I have a deep voice and I'm tall, I, I could certainly, first of all, there wouldn't be that height difference between O'Hare and, and Ta Tamalin was like very short. So they wanted somebody with a taller stature. And I mm -hmm. think one of the reasons why they cast me is just because I have that sort of tomboy kind of thing. I did, you know, back then especially. But I also think that it was important to retain Ivanova's femininity once she was off work. And I think it was really important to be in touch with so many aspects of her personality. I mean, it, people joke and say, oh, you're typecast as a bisexual Russian telepathic commander in space. But the, the thing is in the nineties, they didn't, they didn't have the exploration of bisexual characters <laughs> that were not made into a, a, a deal. Like it wasn't, right. and you know, they, I remember in, I was friends with Terry Farrell and in Deep Space Nine, they made a huge issue of, you know, them kissing, you know, it was like, Joe didn't do that. He just presumed that in the future, it doesn't even deserve a mention that she's with a woman and then she's with a man. And then, you know, she mentions an ex-boyfriend that it just, that people were fluid and it, it mm -hmm. much like Rome, it just didn't matter. Nobody made a point of saying, oh, she's gay. So yeah. I think that was part of the really interesting thing about her. And I think, the 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 sort of push me pull me aspect of her religion you know there weren't a, there weren't any jewish actively jewish characters <laughs> i mean i think they had you know they sort of suggested that uh, leonard nimoy was jewish in real life but um you know he certainly there weren't a lot of classically jewish characters in sci-fi as well so there were many aspects to ivanova that were unique not yeah. just that she was strong a strong woman or that she spoke back to the men or told the commander or captain what to do. I, I think that it's just that Joe didn't see it much like he didn't see gayness as a thing. He didn't see femaleness as a thing when it came down to doing a job. And, right. and that's why he gave her the backstory of being the best student, the youngest Lieutenant commander, somebody who's so on the straight and narrow and so, so good at her job that it's at the expense of her personal life. And, and mm -hmm. so that, that also shows that human fallibility of if you don't devote yourself to your career in, in that, that, that much so, and it's that much of a focus, then what do you lose? Like right. the potential of, of, of a ha happiness. So it, it, I think all of those, those themes um, come into play when it comes to Ivanova. For me, she was miraculous to play because I could, you know, I could touch upon everything. Once Once Joe gave me permission, I did beg him to give her a sense of humor. Eventually I, I got to look it up. And, I, and, and that was great because I'm kind of the class clown and everybody was cutting up on the set. And so that, that was refreshing when she finally just loosened up a little bit. But 
I think it was also just, it was just a joy to not be, um, you know, constantly about your looks, you mm -hmm. know, uniform and flat boots and my ponytail and not a lot of makeup and which thrilled me to death because I don't like being, you know, touched up a lot. <laughs> all of that, all the stuff that goes into, it. and it's funny because now I'm playing the captain of the LAPD on, on 911 and it's like ponytail, very little makeup. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> touches me, you know, it's hair, hair helmet. So it's, it's funny how these jobs keep going through, but when you've got the really sex pot jobs it's like oh god you know the hairspray and all the crap and <laughs> false eyelashes you know so um it was a joy to play her to answer your question in an extremely long-winded way <laughs> it's okay i loved it thank you so much i really appreciate it <laughs>